Brothers and sisters, I think we should get started. Thank you for being here. It's good to see you on this uh, Sabbath day. Um, to get us started, Sister Jennifer Barton has agreed to give us an opening prayer. Okay. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful for our blessings. We're grateful for the gospel and we're grateful for our unity as a ward during this time of the COVID. And we ask you to bless our ward that will be safe, that we'll know what kind of things to participate in as individuals. And we ask you to bless the missionaries, Emma and Sister Barton and Sister Green in their devotional today and in their work as missionaries in Austin, Texas. Again, we're grateful for all blessings and we pray for these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So uh, great. it's great to have you here as a ward, and it's great to have Sister Barton and Sister Green with us today. Um, they're serving in the Texas San Antonio mission, uh, but their current assignment is in the city of Austin, and they maybe are planning to talk a little bit about that. Sister Green has had a more circuitous route to that mission. She first uh, was assigned to serve in Korea and served there for how many months? Um, so I was in Korea for about six to seven months. Six to seven months. And then you were, um, all the missionaries were, all the American missionaries were pulled out of Korea. And, and so you were at home and then got reassigned to Texas and yeah. had been there for a couple of weeks now, almost, right? Yes, like yeah. a week and a half. Yeah, a week and a half. <laughs> okay. So um, it's great to have you sisters with us, and I'm just going to turn the time over to you. The time over to you. Time over to you. Oh no! Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, we are so excited to be with all of y'all today, and um, we're really grateful for this opportunity. Um, we wanted to start out with a musical number that we have been practicing just today. To, today. Great. We literally, we started practicing it today. So please bear with us, but um, hopefully it'll bring the spirit. So let me get my guitar. Okay. Because we are going to talk about a very joyful subject. 
um, and one that is very near and dear to our hearts because it is what we do every single day. <laughs> um, and we're going to be talking about missionary work. And so um, before we do that, um, we kind of, um, Bishop already um, kind of introduced us, but um, we kind of just want to tell you how the work is going in Austin. Um, because a lot of the time, what we hear is um, we get calls from members and they go, oh, it must be so boring sitting around in your house. And yes, it can be boring to be inside of our house, but we're not sitting around. Well, we might be sitting around, but we're doing things <laughs> while we sit around. And we're actually teaching about 24 people right now in our area. And three of them are on baptismal date. And um, um, hopefully somebody will be baptized in the next month, which is awesome. And we're finding about three people a week. Um, hopefully a little bit more. Hopefully we'll be able to find somebody today. But the missionary work has not stopped. And it is a little bit different. Um, and we're blessed to be in this area because every area is a little bit um, different in its demographic and um, how it all works. So really, it's not really about the numbers at all. <laughs> it's about the people, and we wanted to talk about that. But um, we just wanted to kind of share that missionary work hasn't stopped, and we're doing the best we can out here um, to help um, all of God's children and um, using our circumstances to the best of our ability. Yeah. Um, I was telling Sister Barton, I was telling her how I honestly feel busier than ever. Um, so um, like Bishop said, I served in Korea before this and teaching is very different there. We were excited to have two people. We would get super, super excited. So I came here and Sister Barton was like, okay, we're teaching about 24 people and my mind almost exploded. I was like, what? <laughs> like that is not a thing. <laughs> it was crazy. And it is really cool how we have been able to see the work continuing to move forward even during this time. Um, our mission had a goal of finding 200 people this week and we've almost reached it. And it's just crazy watching the work continue to progress and how really God's work just can't stop it. Like nothing can really stop God from moving his work forward. And so it's really cool to be a part of it right now. Yeah. And just because Sister Lindsay, <laughs> I'm, just to I'm so sorry, my last companion was Sister Lindsay. Just because Sister Green found only two people a week in Korea, that's no worse or better than how it is in Texas or in Provo or um, anywhere else in the world. It's just the effort that we put into it and um, the heart that is behind it. So that's kind of what we wanted to talk about today. So with that being said, um, there is a book that's pretty famous among missionaries. It used to be called the White Handbook or the white Bible, some missionaries would call it that. Um, but this is a new missionary handbook, and we wanted to read a little part from it. And it says this. Okay. <clears throat> Your mission didn't really begin the day you were set apart and won't end the day you're released. That sounds kind of crazy. <laughs> like, I'm going to be a missionary for the rest of my life. But listen, <laughs> um, a mission isn't like putting on an employee or school uniform in the morning, only to take it off again when the day is done. Since the time you were baptized, you have been on the covenant path that leads to eternal happiness, joy, and peace. Your full-time mission experience can be a transforming event, but should also be an integral part of your life mission experience. When seen from an eternal perspective, your full-time mission experience is more than a checkbox to be marked off. It is a means to continue to become a lifelong disciple of Jesus Christ. And so we wanted to talk today about being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Um, we are not just missionaries out here. That is a part of our calling. But above all, we are disciples of Jesus Christ. Um, and all of y'all in the ward, um, you all have different callings and, um, and different ministering assignments. And those are all great. But those aren't just to be ministering those aren't just to have ministering assignments and to have callings. Those are enabling things to help us become disciples of Jesus Christ. And this is what we're all ultimately trying to become. No matter where we are, a missionary or not, um, this is the purpose of the gospel. And this is the purpose of um, most of the things or almost all the things that we do as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so 
Um, I wanted everybody to turn to, if you could, um, Mosiah chapter 18. Say a prayer to begin our trek. Mom's gonna do at me for ten. And then, so it's it's Mosiah, um, eighteen, and verses eight through nine, and they're pretty famous passages. So, um, they'll probably be seem pretty familiar to you. But um, is everybody? Well, if if somebody is there, would they be willing to read it? Oh, wait. Do you want me to? Oh, Sister Newton wants to. I think she's telling you that you can, Mom. Yeah, okay. okay. I'll do it. And she can read the next one. So, do we starting with nine? No, so we're starting with verse eight. Uh, and it came to pass, he said unto them, Behold, here are the waters of Mormon, for thus were they called, and now as ye are desirous to come into the fold of God and to be called of his people and are willing to bear one another's burdens that they may be light. Yea, and, that, and are willing to mourn with those that mourn. Yea, and comfort those that stand in need of comfort and to stand as witnesses of God at all times and in all things and in all places that ye may be in even unto death, that ye may be redeemed of God and be numbered with those of the first resurrection that ye may have eternal life. Now I say unto you, if this be the desire of your hearts, what have you against being baptized in the name of the Lord as a witness before him that ye have entered into a covenant with him, that ye will serve him and keep his commandments, that he may pour out his spirit more abundantly upon you. Thank you so much. So this chapter is all about um, our baptismal covenant. And these first couple of um, verses um, explain that pretty clearly. Um, and I don't know how interactive these devotionals are, actually. Uh, it can be as interactive as you want. Okay. Okay. <laughs> awesome. I just I wasn't sure if that it was just supposed to be us talking. Um, but with that being said, of our purpose as members of the church to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Um, how do you think that goes along with also this promise, this baptismal promise or covenant that we've made um, as members of the church? Does anybody have anything they would like to share? You can share too if you want. <laughs> If not, I can, I can explain maybe some of my thoughts. So um, something that really sticks out to me is that we are called to be one. It says, if you're desirous to come into the fold of God and be called his people. And then after that, it says, after we are called to be his people, what does that mean? What does it mean to be called his people? Well, he's going to tell us. You're willing to mourn with those that mourn, comfort those that stand in need of comfort, and to stand as witness of God at all times, in all things, in all places. And I think that embodies um, what a disciple of Jesus Christ is. Um, I think that the church has really been emphasizing this idea of loving God and loving our neighbor. And obviously it's been an emphasis forever, but... Um, especially now. And I think also those things are what helps us become um, disciples of Christ. And so, Sister Green, you want to talk about maybe how we can be disciples a little bit more? Yes. Okay. Um, so, while I was in the MTC, um, there was an elder in my district, just the group of people that was in my class and the group of people that I was learning with, who um, would always say to us to drop our net. It was kind of like our MTC phrase. And so it comes from the scripture found in Matthew 4, 
um, and it's verses 18 to 20, and it reads, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And so this kind of became like my MTC district's scripture. And anytime we would start doing things that would kind of pull us away from Christ or not really following the missionary standards, like, you know, singing songs and just like anything worldly, um, <laughs> he would say, hey, sister or elder, drop that net. Um, and so it kind of became our representation of dropping the things that kept us from getting closer to Christ um, and allowing ourselves to kind of walk more towards our Savior. And that's very different for everyone. I'm not saying that all of y'all back home have to, you know, not watch any movies and not listen to any music and follow the missionary nets that we have to drop while we are set apart. But I do know that there are things in our life um, that keep us from progressing and that keep us from being true disciples of our Savior. And sometimes we hold on to those nets really, really tightly. And sometimes they're really hard to let go. Sometimes they're tangled in our fingers and it takes a while. But um, I know that through prayer and through constantly just trying to be a little bit more like Christ every single day, we can discover not only what those nets are, but we can discover how to drop those nets and how to come closer to Christ by letting go of the things that stop us from being like him. And those things might not even be like temptations or um like sins per se, but they could also be things that we're just holding on to, like, um, like what, what's something like not forgiving somebody, or um, maybe I could be a little bit more selfless, or um, maybe I just need to stop worrying about that thing that happened like three years ago. I've already repented of it, and I should just forgive myself, <laughs> um, or anything of the sort. Um, there's a lot to be said with letting go and moving on so that we can become um, greater instruments in the hands of the Lord. Um, and so we kind of want to talk about how we can become greater instruments in the hand of the Lord, how we can become better disciples. We've already kind of talked about um, maybe letting go of some things that are keeping us from doing that. But how can you be a missionary or a disciple of Jesus Christ? Um, any ideas? There can be, it can be very simple. <laughs> I, I'll say something. Um, I'm the only one talking, you guys. So uh, we can be an example. I love, I don't think there, that some people are ready for a full on lesson or or anything like that, but they, but when they see us living the way that we live, and they, um, I don't know, there's just a lot you can do. Exa example is powerful, so that's one way. I love that. I think examples are a lot more powerful than sometimes we give them credit for. My mom was actually telling me a cool story the other day about how um, she had just like ran into someone, and um, that person was asking my mom if. Um, well, that person was just telling my mom how because of her brother's example, he actually joined the church. And my mom's brother had no idea who this person was. He could not remember him. He wasn't very close with him. But by pure example, um, that person eventually joined the church down the road just because he saw someone that was coming unto Christ and he saw someone just like with that light and he wanted it, even though he didn't know him very well. So examples are super powerful. Um, does anybody else like have a comment that they would like to say or we can move on? I think just adding on to what Mr. Barton was saying, like just being examples of being friends with everyone and knowing that we are all brothers and sisters regardless of what religion or what background people have. And there's always common ground. There's so much goodness out there and just being loving to neighbors and being kind and you know, just being their friend, no matter what, like, whether they choose to take the lessons down the road or not, and just um, showing that friendship and treating them the way that Christ would. I think another I way... I love that. Oh, yeah, go for it. No, I was just thinking, I think another one is... Um, 
defending the church when we need to. Like, I've noticed that people that don't know very much about my church, if I'm, if somebody is attacking or saying something that's negative about the church, then I try and like, in a loving way, inform them differently. And then the people that are around you actually are more interested in the church because they see not what they're always told, but also mm -hmm. from somebody that actually believes in it. So. Yeah, I love that. Way of showing it, so. I love those comments. And those are so good. And I love that they're so based on this idea of um, loving God and loving our neighbor um, and being ourselves. Um, so with that, I just, I'm going to give like a couple more examples and then kind of go off of like what everybody else is saying. So other things that we can do, develop our talents, um, be proud of like what we can do as people and share that with others. Um, like not be afraid to stand up for yourself, um, but also not be afraid to stand up for somebody else. Um, be involved, be involved, not only in your ward, but in your community. Um, with your neighbors um, and with your friends, um, coworkers, um, and um, ministering is a really great one. Um, fulfilling your callings um, and keeping your promises with God, and that goes back to that baptismal covenant that we were talking about of mourning with those that mourn and comforting those that stand in need of comfort. And I, I love that you um, all said that you know it doesn't have to be hey, here's a Book of Mormon. <laughs> um, it can be, um, hey, can I like help you with your yard <laughs> or something? I don't know. It doesn't even have to be that much. Um, and this is what I think all of these things have in common is all, everything that we've been talking about has the spirit in common. Are we following the spirit and what the spirit is testifying to us? according to that person's need and according to our ability to do that. We don't have to act like anybody else. We just have to act like ourselves because God knows each of us. And so he's going to testify to us and help us and guide us through the spirit according to our abilities. Um, and so I just want to share a little a story and you please um, join in, but we have a neighbor. She's amazing. Her name is Alicia. And we love her. Do you want to talk about Alicia? We love Alicia. She was like the first per person I really met when I was here in Texas and just so incredibly welcoming, so, so loving. And she just always tells us that she just loves Jesus and she's trying to do what he wants her to do. And she doesn't like quite know what that is, but she just keeps going. And she is just the sweetest soul ever. We love her. Right. And I thought multiple times like, okay, like maybe we should give her a Book of Mormon. How can we like start teaching her the, the classic missionary <laughs> mindset? Um, and those are really great things. Um, but I've never felt like it was the right thing. Um, and honestly, we were talking about this the other day. That's okay. We should not force anything um, or, you know, go contrary to the spirit if the spirit is telling us something otherwise. We have a really good relationship with her. We share scriptures with her. We talk to her, but we've both come to the conclusion that right now um, maybe isn't the time, but that doesn't mean that next week isn't. Um, but and then another example is our friend Gloria, where um, we were walking down the street in an apartment complex and she was mumbling to herself like, I need prayers, whatever. And obviously this is a little bit different, right? Because we're missionaries and we go up to random people and, and say, hey, but um, I was terrified, but the spirit told me that I needed to say something to her. And she was mad. She was mad at the beginning. She did not want to be her friend. But now we are best friends because we found a common ground in Jesus Christ. And we just taught her the restoration. And we are terrified to teach her the restoration because um, for a lot of reasons. But she called us and she said, girls, my sweet babies, please. <laughs> Like, thank you so much for this, for this lesson. I believe it. I believe Joseph Smith saw a vision. I believe it all. And we are just like, Gloria is ready. <laughs> and so with all these things, um, with being a disciple of Jesus Christ, with being a missionary, 
listen to the spirit because the spirit will testify you of truth and will guide you. Um, and so we just kind of wanted to end with, how can you help the missionaries in your area? I didn't even know who the missionaries were, <laughs> to be honest, um, back at home. And it's a little bit different in Utah because there's like one companionship to like three stakes or something like that. But um, we have noticed that, well not noticed, the biggest way for missionaries to, missionary work to keep going um, and to help our investigators and um, just help the ward as a whole is member involvement. And so if you don't know who the missionaries are, please reach out to them, um, figure out who they are. And even if you can't interact with them, pray for them um, because we so appreciate the support. Um, and we can even like send a little thing, like a booklet about like, how can we help the missionaries? Because it's way more simple than um, referring a friend. Um, you can help them just like their posts on social media or you can feed them <laughs> or anything like that. Um, and we know that you will feel blessed and be blessed um, by doing that. Um, because we're all ultimately disciples of Jesus Christ, back to that beginning. And we're all just doing our best to follow the spirit, to love God and to love our neighbor and do the best that we can to follow our baptismal covenant. Yeah, um, I know that like, as we continue to strive to become more like Christ and continue to strive to devote our lives and just improve a little bit each and every day, that he will place those people in our path that we need to cross with and cross with. And he will give us opportunities to see people and talk to people and be able to be confident. Um, I love what Sister Barton, this Sister Barton, um, said about being an example, because as we become more Christ-like and as we continuously strive to become a better disciple of Jesus Christ, people will see that and people will automatically be drawn to you and missionary work comes a little more easily because people are coming to you and they're asking why you're different and why you stand out so much. And so I know that as we continue to strive to become more like Christ, missionary work kind of goes hand in hand with it. And as we become better disciples, it's easier to do missionary work as well. Yeah. That. that was really <laughs> great. And I also share that testimony that um, it doesn't have to be anything big and it doesn't have to be um, outside of your character. Um, there's a lot of courage that comes into being a disciple of Jesus Christ, but that's exactly what we're just asking anybody to do. And that's what we're asked to do by God is just be a disciple. And that comes with all those things that Sister Green was talking about. And we know that each of you and um, every one of God's children has special abilities and um, influences that they can bring to this world. And that's what the people around us need. Um, and people need hope and they need joy, especially right now. Um, and we know that this gospel can bring that to their lives. And so we just wanted to invite you to um, consider how you can be a more dedicated uh, disciple of Jesus Christ, whether that be within your home or with your friends or at work, um, and how you could even just reach out to your neighbor in kindness, um, because that is missionary work. Because as missionaries, we are, our purpose is to invite others to come closer to Jesus Christ. And um, we know that if you do, you'll find greater blessings in your life and you'll feel closer to your Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, so thank you so much for letting us come and share this with you. Um, you can, I mean, if you have any questions, ask my parents. <laughs> um, and we would love to, we would love to help. Um, if you have any questions about helping your, the missionaries in your area, um, we would love to help um, and answer those questions. But yeah, we say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, Sister Barton, Sister Green, thank you so much for your wonderful message. We're grateful for your service as missionaries too. Grateful that your mission president gave you permission to join us today and uh, share your spirit with us. Uh, does anyone have questions for Sister Barton or Sister Green? 
Okay. Bishop, Thank you. Yes. Bishop, this is Brother Lee. I just have one real quick question for Sister Barton, Sister Green. Um, you have 24 families that you're teaching now. Is that right? Uh, 24 individuals. Ind mm -hmm. Individuals. How do you guys, how do you get new, um, uh, new investigators? Uh, I mean, you can't go outside and, you know, how do you do that? Yes, we would love to answer that question. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> yes, and any other question that anybody has. Um, so it's a little bit more difficult, obviously, because we're not going like door to door and we're discouraged from talking to everybody, which is very much like against missionary <laughs> nature. Um, but there's certain, there's a couple of different things. So um, member referrals are huge. Um, like working with our, um, like the members of our ward and um, helping them become better missionaries. That's a huge way that we have found people to teach. Um, there's also, we've noticed since Corona or the COVID-19 that um, an influx of people have been self-referred themselves to the missionaries, which is really, really neat. Um, and so we get a lot of self-referrals. Also missionaries have a, they have area book, but it's now an app. And um, we found a lot of success from going to our, um, the people that the missionaries had taught or even run into like three years ago. Um, one of the people that's actually on baptismal date for June 9th, um, she was contacted by the missionaries probably two years ago. Um, and we just called her back up and we said, hello. Um, and oh, another thing that we've been doing is that we've been going to the ward, um, like directory. ward directory and just helping members in any way we can. Those that are um, active and strong members of the church and those that maybe haven't been back to church in, two, in a while, um, helping just like find the ward together and having that unity has helped a lot. What else do you think? Yeah, um, there's also a lot of like social media efforts going on. So a lot of missionaries have really cool Facebook pages. There have been some super, super creative ones. And so we have a Facebook page as well. And so we're just using that to also share testimonies. And it's cool. It's been able to reach like even some of like my friends back home. So they're not counted as like people we're teaching, but like they're still being taught and being found like throughout the world from these Facebook pages. So that's another way. Yeah, and that's a huge way. And that's an easy way for members to help missionaries is like if you have social media, like like their posts or share them or comment on their posts because the more likes and shares and comments that a page gets, the more likely it's going to be accessible to a wider like audience range. Um, we've had people in our mission who um, have been baptized from because they found, were found on social media in the past couple of months. So kind of crazy. <laughs> How are you teaching? Is it all remote? Are you on phone, uh, phone calls, texting, emailing, everything? Yep, all, all of the above. above. <laughs> yep. You have an investigator who's, who's deaf, I know, and, um, and you're, so are you just writing back and forth? That's how you're teaching? Yeah, we do a lot of text lessons with her, um, which is different. That's something like we've never done, but it's pretty cool. But there's also a lady in our ward who knows sign language, so she's able to interpret some of the lessons that we have which is really special. Those are really, those are really, really cool. So a lot through like video chat. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other questions? Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Barton, Sister Green. Uh, you, you mentioned that um, we should be thinking about, I know that Emma, every time we talk to her, she gives us a challenge. So we're full of challenges in our home, but um, we, you invited us to think of ways we can help our missionaries and, and brother Lee in, in his bishopric message today talks about, uh, about missionary work and the blessing it can be and the way that we can connect with missionaries. Our mission uh, here uh, increased um, almost by double, right? Uh, and, and so we have um, some new activities that we've been asked to, to be involved in to help the missionaries stay busy. And uh, some of you have been recipients of phone calls on Thursday 
Um, so, uh, we're, Brother Saboya, our ward mission leader, will be reaching out to ward members to have um, a spiritual thought delivered by the missionaries on Thursdays. If you are interested in that and haven't already done that, uh, please feel free to contact Brother Saboya and he can make those arrangements. Also, we are supposed to provide a service activity for the missionaries. I hope I'm getting this right. Is it one a month or one a week? It's one every week, I think. So um, be thinking about ways that we can um, have the missionaries serve in our ward through uh, service activities, one to two hours. And there are a few other things that, that the mission is implementing that we can be involved in to help the missionaries serving in, in our mission. Um, again, so, thanks, Sister Burnt, Sister Green. Did anyone have a comment? I might have cut some Bishop, off. Bishop, yeah. we, the, sorry, this is Marie. Um, yeah. is, we just chat with Brother Saboya on that to, to get those messages from the missionaries. Is that yeah. right? Our ward is supposed to set up 10 of those appointments each week. Okay. And so if, you, if you're interested and in, in willing to spend some time it's a, it's a two to four minute or four or five minute message that they'll give. Um, Brother Lee talked about that in, in, his, in his message today that was sent out. But uh, please contact Brother Saboya and he can um, help make that arrangement. Okay. Uh, thanks for being here, everyone. We'll have some interesting news coming out this week about some ne next steps in... Um, in meetings, uh, the stake will be sending out uh, some information uh, probably midweek. So look forward to that. We are now going to have Brother Chris Bauer offer our closing prayer. Chris has some roots in Texas, and he can probably throw out a y'all every so often if he wants to. Um, but he's going to. I pray, but. <laughs> Our Father in heaven, we are grateful for thy blessings upon us, and we thank thee for the privilege that it's been to meet together this afternoon and for the message and that, that we've received from Sister Barton and Sister Green and through the Spirit as our hearts have been touched. And we pray that we might have greater desire to, uh, to serve others, to progress as disciples, and to share the blessings of the restoration with, with those that we come in contact with. We're so very thankful for the service of the missionaries throughout the world, and we ask thee to pour out thy spirit upon them, to give them strength and, and desire to serve and faith. And we pray for all the members of our faith throughout the world that we might, all of us, unitedly, have greater desires to share the blessings of the gospel. We thank thee again for this opportunity this afternoon, and we pray for peace and safety in this world, for healing for those in need of healing and comfort for those who need comfort. And we ask you to guide us to, to do those things that will um, help bring that healing and comfort to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Bauer. By the way, ward members, uh, I think we're still um, going to be privileged with a musical devotional next next week. Sister Deanna Lee uh, and and her daughter Jennifer is that still on? Great. So we look forward to to, to seeing your faces next week as well. Thank you. Thank you.